Hey everybody, today I want to talk about ick, or more precisely I want to talk about something that's not ick, but I believe is mistaken for ick on a lot of occasions. In fact, I think I mistook it for ick uh, very recently. Now, every time I talk about ick, I always mention how it is a host-dependent parasite, meaning that without fish in the tank, it cannot survive. Its life cycle depends on having fish in the tank for it to feed on. So if there's no fish in the tank, the ick will die off very shortly. And the other side of that coin is that as long as there are fish in the tank, if you have ick in the tank, you will continue to see the ick expressing itself in the little white spots that you'll see uh, develop on the fish. There is no dormant period for ick. If you go months and months with no ick and then suddenly there's an outbreak, that's not ick. And every time I talk about ick, I always get somebody that will say just that. I've gone months and months, I haven't done this, I haven't done that, I haven't put any new plants in the tank, and suddenly I've got ick. Um, you know, so how do you explain that? And I've never been able to explain it. I've always just shrugged and said, I don't know, but it's not ick. That's just not how ick works. It doesn't have a dormant period. If you go for months and months and months, and then suddenly there's an outbreak, that's not ick. And so I think I finally figured out what it was, or more accurately, I should say one of my viewers figured out what it was and sent me a link. And I will put uh, a link down below to that article. There's a lot of good information in there. And what I think it is, is epistylus. It's a little organism that does not feed on the fish, but it feeds on bacteria in the water column. And if it gets an opportunity to anchor onto the fish, in much the way limpets might anchor on to something and then they can be sort of mobile and they can filter the bacteria out of the water by being supported by the fish's body. So they're not actually feeding on the fish, they're, at, they're living on the fish. And they can develop what look like little white spots all over the fish. Now, there's some key elements that you can tell are different than ick, and these are a few of the things that were making me scratch my head when I was dealing with it, and I was treating it for ick, and it was not responding to any of my ick treatment. And some of the things that I found unusual about it was the way that the spots would sort of clump together. It wasn't evenly distributed over the body of the animal. I had sort of patches of white spots, and the white spots also seemed to be proud of the fish's body. You know, they, they moved off of the fish's body, uh, or stuck out, I should say. And I've never experienced that with ick before. This actually looked like it had crusted salt on it. Not white spots, but white material on the outside of the fish. And I'd never seen that before in ick. And that's because that's not how ick works. It's this epistylus that grows like that. So, when I was treating it for ick, when I was treating my quarantine tank for ick, it wasn't responding to the ick attack, which is an all-natural um, ick medication. I've used it for years. I've never had a problem with it. It's always worked. Every time I've used it, it's worked exactly as it's supposed to. And in this case, it was doing absolutely nothing. So, I turned the heat up, which I didn't realize, while that might kill off ick or help you know, with the ick treatment, it's the worst thing you can do for epistylus because it thrives in warm temperatures. So that was a problem that I didn't realize I was exacerbating. I also did not heed the advice of a lot of my viewers who kept insisting that my quarantine tank was filthy and really needed to be cleaned out. I had a lot of substrate in there, I had a lot of mulm on the bottom, and all of that is conducive to this epistylus. It grows on, it lives and feeds on bacteria in the water column. So if you've got mom and crud and all that stuff in there breaking down and producing high bacterial loads, I was basically incubating this stuff. I was giving it a nice warm environment. And on top of all that, my filter, while I could see that the filter was flowing, I never pulled the actual intake out and cleaned it, and so the water was just flowing through my filter at a trickle. The real circulation in the tank was coming from an air stone, and that's not a lot of circulation. So I created the perfect storm for this epistylus to attack these fish. Uh, well, I say attack, I should say colonize these fish. 
Now, in fairness, I brought them home with these white spots on it already. I assumed they had ick on them. No big deal. Ick is really not that big a deal. I've, I've treated many fish. That's, if I see fish that have ick on them at, a, at the fish store, that's not, um, you know, that's not a, um, a, a killer for me. I'll just, I'll still bring them home or a deal breaker. That's what I was looking for. That's not a deal breaker for me if I see fish with ick on them. That, it's just not an issue. And so when I brought these fish home, they already had this on them, and I treated it as though it was ick. And I didn't finally get on top of it until I switched over and started using ick attack, which is a stronger medication for ick, and that contains formalin and malachite green. And there are some reports that formalin and malachite green will kill epistylus. And salt baths are also good for killing the epistylus. Now, the salt baths for killing the epistylus are marine um, saturations of salt, like a 3% salt solution and a quick, you know, 10 minute bath. What I did was just put about a tablespoon and a half of um, aquarium salt, you know, just sodium chloride in my quarantine tank. So that probably helped. I really did jack the salt way up as much as I could. You know, as much as I felt comfortable putting freshwater fish in that high of a salinity. And so between that and the formalin um, and the malachite green, I think I eventually finally got on top of it. But even when it died off and I fought it back, it didn't go away in the same way that ick does. Ick normally goes away very quickly. Once you start treating it, within a few days, you'll see those white spots start to disappear. And once that process starts, within a day or two, those white spots are just gone. And then, of course, you continue treating for another week after that to make sure they don't come back. But the spots go away very quickly. And in this case, with my whatever it was at the time, I think, you know, again, it was just a strange ick, wasn't behaving normally. And that's not what it was doing. The spots were going away, but they were going away really, really slowly. And it was like the spots themselves were getting smaller, which, again, doesn't make sense for the way ick works. And so once I got this link from this, you know, viewer sent me a link saying, I think this is what you're dealing with. Uh, I realized almost immediately that that's what I was dealing with. So I will, again, you know, I'll put a link down below to that article. I did read some other stuff. And at the end of the day, I found that this one particular uh, article was the best source of the most information all right in one spot. There's lots of good pictures. You can really see some good um, comparisons between what ick looks like versus what this epistylus looks like. And I think a lot of people out there that might have been dealing with these weird mysterious outbreaks of ick or these weird, you know, ick that they just couldn't control or couldn't get on top of, I think you might find that this epistylus is what you're actually dealing with and it's not ick at all. So leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check out that link. Make sure you're subscribed, and don't forget this one here is my 125-gallon New World tank. So thanks a lot. I'll see you real soon in the next one.